first epistle of Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. First Peter 3, 15. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Gentleness and respect or meekness, like some versions bring. Respect for the image of God, which is present in every person, for God has created us in his image and likeness. Without gentleness, meekness, and respect, you are already in the wrong. You have already lost the discussion. If you are disrespectful, if you are rude to someone, your witness, your testimony has already become compromised. That's why Peter says, do this with gentleness, meekness, and respect. Reverence for the image of God present in the person with whom you are talking. It is love. These are aspects of love and are part of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and meekness and has to do with being patient and benign to others. It is the mark of the Christian. Jesus said, this is how people will know that you are my disciples, because you love. Give reason for the hope that you have. Be ready to give a reason. Otherwise, how can you justify that you have that hope? First of all, let's remember that we have that hope. We are not hopeless. Hopelessness is despair. It is the mark of a hellish condition. That's why Dante Alighieri, the Italian medieval poet, said that there is a gate, the gate of hell, where it is written, lasciate tutta la speranza voi che entrate. Abandon of hope, or hope. Abandon all hope, you who here enter. To be hopeless, to be in hopelessness and despair, that is the very definition of hell. When you are separate from God, when you are separate from hope. That's why Paul says that hope is a virtue. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the three so-called theological virtues, faith, hope and love. Hope, which is a gift of the Spirit. It is a joy to have hope. But how can we be hopeful that is full of hope? We must have had an experience of God's presence which is the fruit of a knowledge of God that is more than theoretical. It must flow from the 
flow from the head to the heart and find its place in the soul. And then you can confess. Then you can explain and give reason for the hope that you have. Then you can defend your faith because it is real for you. What is the reason for hope? Well, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Spirit of God, which is the spirit of adoption. In Romans 8, Paul says, the spirit of adoption is the one through whom we can say, Abba, Father, Papa, Daddy, to God. It means that we have become children of God. You have become a child of God because the Holy Spirit of God now abides within you. And he operates upon you. It is not only the presence of the Holy Spirit, but what the Holy Spirit can do, perfecting you. You see, hope is not only that the circumstances may change and will change around you. Hope is not only believing that this world can change, but that you can change. The Spirit abides within you and He is changing you. And I can become a different person that reacts differently, that responds differently to the challenges of life. I can become a purer person, a godlier person, a holier person, a better person, filled with hope and trust and love and gentleness and respect. And that changes everything. That will change everything. And it is a sign that I'm born again. And because I am born again, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, I can change. Because Christ lives in me. So Peter says, in your heart, you rever, revere Christ as Lord. In your heart, revere Christ as Lord. Or sanctify Christ as your Lord. It is not enough to say that Christ is my Savior. We must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He cannot be my Savior if he is not my Lord. In your heart, he says, that is, in your inner being, receive, like Paul says in Ephesians 3.16, through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. May Christ seat on the throne of your heart instead of your own self, instead of your ego, but Christ. Not, not I, say with me, not I, but Christ. And then you will be obeying this biblical commandment. Revere Christ as Lord. Have a reverence for Christ as the Lord of your being, the Lord of your life, the Lord of your inner being, the Lord of your heart. And then you will understand that the promise is true. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess both on earth and in heaven, all creation 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. Be ready, Peter says. Be prepared. Prepare yourself to give an answer, to give, to offer, to love, to give your time, to give your attention, to give your hand to those who need it, and then give guidance, then give wisdom, give your testimony of what you have experienced, of what you have learned in discipleship as a follower of Christ Jesus the Lord. To all people, to everyone, to anyone who asks, having no prejudice whatsoever, open and ready to testify about the hope that you have. God bless you.